previously on Blood, Sweat, and Tears, Valdez versus Stevenson. I'm not a cheater. All that was building up towards my last fight, and it just didn't let me compete the way I wanted to. I'm mastering boxing. I'm mastering the art of hitting and not getting hit. At the end of the day, we all, we all have a dream. We all have a dream to become the best out there. I just feel like I'm on a whole nother level. I feel like it's going to be a, a master class performance by me. Everyone talks about the young Kingsman at 135 who don't step into the ring against one another. But here at 130, there's champions who want to fight. Who do you want to fight? I mean, there's it's only one fight left at the end of the day. It's the biggest He's fight in the division. It's me versus Oscar Valdez. There's nothing else to look forward to. Oscar can't keep ducking. It's time for him to fight. The 130-pound division, we need to unify. Let's get it. Two unbeaten fighters into the ring. The stakes become definitely amplified. We all want the winner of Shakur Stevenson and Jermaine Harry. On the line, the culmination of a lifetime of hard work, that which must be protected at all costs. A perfect record, one of the most cherished accomplishments in modern day boxing. For one fighter, that mark of distinction will be lost. I'm finally getting the type of big fight that I want where we risking it all and go against somebody else who's going to risk it all. Fans wanted this fight, I'm going to give them this fight. I'm going to do whatever it takes to win. It is in the permanence of defeat that one might dissolve into obscurity, while the success of the victor could potentially reach heights never before seen. This is Blood, Sweat, and Tears, Valdez versus Stevenson. Oscar Valdez is known in the sport of boxing as a Mexican-American world champion. But to his family and himself, he often associates with one nationality over the other. I'm pretty sure Oscar would consider Nogales his home because he loves Mexico and his dad was there. He was training in Nogales, so he was spending more time in Nogales at that time. Pues en primer lugar porque ahí estaba su papá y su papá todo el tiempo andaba con él y él era el que lo entrenaba y él fue el que lo motivó para lo del box. Esa fue una de las razones que ella estaba. Lo demás es porque pues ella tenía sus amigos, tenía su, su ambiente allá y La razón de que venía para acá era nomás para visitarnos y para estar... Pues dividía el tiempo, tanto aquí como allá en Nogales. It's very common to cross the border, especially in those days. It was very common to cross one day to Tucson and then go back to Nogales another day. So we're always back and forth in those spots. So growing up as a kid, I was nothing but sports with my father. By the time I was eight, my father took me to a boxing gym and put the gloves for the first time with some kid who had a little bit more experience and we did a good job. From there, my passion to boxing started getting increasing. And then we would go from Nogales and drive all the way to Tucson and have a lot of amateur fights in Tucson and from Phoenix and all over the place. Mm, cuales, cuales las cualidades? Pues desde muy chico él se le vio que él tenía ganas de seguir el deporte porque de cuando estaba chico él empezó nadando. Él era muy bueno para nadar y ya después pues empezó a agarrar lo del boxeo, pero él tuvo todo el tiempo tuvo, tuvo sueños de grandeza. My grandma's advice is just the same as advice as any grandma to their grandchildren. As she tells me all the time. You gotta work hard and trabaja duro, mijo. Échale ganas. That's her words. Él nunca anda ateniéndose a nadie. Él hace lo que se le ocurre. Eso lo hace. 
Y hasta que no lo, hasta que no lo logra, se queda tranquilo. Él no es de que le voy a decir a fulano, a sultano. Solito se le Solo, va. solito él. I knew that he was going to be the one to help his grandparents. He's always calling them and see how they are. He's always calling me a mom. How's my nana? How's my grandpa? Her and my grandpa are my perfect examples. They've been married for over 40 to 50 years, I believe. And you don't see that nowadays. And they're, they're always together. And they're my examples. For Shakur Stevenson, the last several months have brought about seismic changes as he prepares for the biggest fight of his career. A new addition to the family has introduced new responsibilities outside of his training. Well, my daughter is just a little bit past three months, and her name is Leilani Ashe Stevenson. I definitely never felt this before. Like, I love my family and everybody, but I feel like it's just a difference, like, when you get a daughter, so. She show a uh, personality already. Um, she always laughing, smiling. Um, every time I walk in the room, she always just like staring at me. And uh, she's a little bit uh, spoiled already too. So um, she definitely show personality already. When she came out though, like my mentality, like just seeing her was like a beautiful thing. And I was kind of a little bit scared too at the same time because um, Oh, it's a lot of hard work. I feel like just being up all night with the baby and uh, her crying, feeding her, changing her, I feel like it's like another job. It's a little, it's a little champ. Low hand, right hand that hook. I think pretty much Shakur, Shakur is gonna be the type of father that he needs to be in every situation. So, you know, I think just like he can adapt to every style, I think he can adapt to everything that he come up. I'm pretty sure he'll be as great a father as he is fighter. Just sitting in the room and thinking about my daughter, that's a lot of motivation already. And like being away from her, knowing that I got to sacrifice seeing her for eight weeks just to make sure I put food on her table and make sure that she live a great life is definitely a lot of motivation right there. So it's natural motivation when it comes down to that. Let's, let's speak this here. Who was he before his daughter was born? Did he mean motivation about a daughter then? He didn't have one. So now his daughter coming is just another chapter of his life. You know, another thing that add to his health, that he can prove his legacy and how much a man he is by still dedicating himself, providing for his daughter, and still becoming two-time division champion. I think your goals got to be higher. My goals can't just be, I need to be Valdez. I want to be the best boxer of my generation. So being the best boxer of my generation, I'm not there yet. I got to stay motivated. I know Valdez is just a stepping stone to where I want to be. A pleasant day in Las Vegas unexpectedly brings turmoil between two fighters as they come face to face. Today, we are joined by WBC Junior Lightweight World Champion Oscar Valdez and WBO Junior Lightweight World Champion Shakur Stevenson. I don't expect a, a fight that we're going to stay in there and go toe to toe. Mm -hmm. I do not expect that. I'm expecting a, of a classy chess game. So a technical fight? Oh, yes. OK, that's perfect. That day in Vegas for the first face off with Shakur Stevenson was not particularly what I was expecting. I was curious to think that maybe this is gonna be one of those face-offs where he starts talking a lot and maybe trying to push me or something. So I was trying to read his facial expressions and body language. And I believe the first thing that he said was that he believed I was taller, he called me short. I believe he said that I had a big head. So that's pretty much it. Just make sure you're not cheating. <laughs> make sure there's no cheating going on, my boy. <laughs> Don't worry about me cheating. Hey, man, I've seen it, you know. I'm just saying, don't, don't, cheat don't worry. Don't, I don't, don't like cheating, cheating, man. All right, well, they will be able to settle all of this in the ring come April 30th. As day turns to night, 
Valdez and his camp come together for a deserved moment to reflect on his upcoming bout. I'm the Iron Chef, baby. About to cook up some Shakur. That's what we're about to do. We try to stay eating the, the same thing, keep it simple, you know, not spend too much money and make it work. Oscar's very simple. He's not a diva like Shakur Stevenson. He's not a little like he is. This is all overconfidence. I think that's one of the keys right there, the body shots. He's not used to people trying to go to a body. And that can make him maybe even make a mistake. But also what I've seen in his last fight, sometimes he gets a little too comfortable. He thinks he's dominated his rival. All I need is that one mistake for him to make, and a big punch can land, can change the fight. And then once he feels that shot, you know, he's not gonna wanna stay in there. When those times where you're tired, exhausted, how much do you want it? Do you got the guts to go through it? That's the question. I think I can get him in that position. The fight's boring, Bubs. Right. That's Shakur. Probably is boring. You win the fights in the gym, exactly. working hard. He's not working harder than me. You know, I'll be 100% ready for him, no matter what. You ready, Brett? Chip. You ready? Let's go. It's Willie D, y'all. Scarface is in the building. Collectively, we are the ghetto boys. Reloaded. Reloaded with another episode of Information. In a rare respite from training, Shakur Stevenson meets some renowned Houstonians to discuss the catalyzing event that could lead him to superstardom. Shakur Stevenson, also yes. in the studio. His manager, Jay Prince. Welcome yes. to the show again. Glad to be here, man. Shakur, you're from Newark, New Jersey. That's where you grew up, right? Yeah, Newark, New Jersey. Okay, Brick City. Brick City, yeah. Brick you City. Know. Brick City. <laughs> Did you ever have to hit somebody with the heat in the streets? <laughs> <laughs> you know, were you sparring in the streets before you got in the ring? Yeah, I got I got in a couple of fights before, but um, yeah, I definitely had to like put some people in their place before. Yeah. Are you looking to do anything outside of boxing? Right. After boxing, I want to be able to do a lot of stuff with business, with real estate. Um, a lot of different things, but um, right now I'm trying to focus more so on the boxing. So, yeah, but we're right. gonna get there. Like right. we're gonna, we got Jay with us, and you know he's one of the smartest persons that I done ever met, and one of the realest people that I done met. So, um, I was just watching like the way he moved. I take my little notes, and um, we're gonna get there one day. Now, you got the big fight coming up April 30th. This fight, if everything goes like we plan it to go, it's gonna change your life forever. Like, this is a huge fight with Oscar Valdez. When you handle your business yeah. on April 30th, there's a very good chance that you're gonna be, you're gonna be in, you're gonna be in the runnings for Ring Magazine Fighter of the Year. Yeah. And what's that like, man, that feeling? I feel like I've been waiting on this moment my whole career. Mm. I've been waiting to get the WBC strap. I've been waiting to unify the division. I've been waiting to fight another thoroughbred fighter where I can show like I'm the most thoroughbred fighter. So um, I'm excited. I can't wait, and I got a lot of time to go. I gotta put a, put some work in and perform yeah. April 30th. In my opinion, it's two things that a man must learn to control, and that's his emotions and his. Yeah. If you can do that. The world really is yours. You can go as far as you, you know, as far as you want to go. Yeah. Man, we wish you all the luck in the world, bro. You. Man, do your thing, bro. Yeah, you got the world depending on you right now. Thank you. And don't let that put no pressure on you, but just be ready for it. It's coming. Thank you. I appreciate it. Bam. That. Everything. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Shakur Stevens. As fight night approaches, the anticipation in camp runs high, leaving Shakur Stevenson to seek a much needed distraction. I feel like I get nervous before the fight. Like when I'm in training camp, sometimes I might get nervous. So if it's fight week and you know, uh, I'm in the room by myself, I might have a little bit of nerves going through my veins. But I feel like when it's fight day, 
Right here. I know what I'm here to do. Like I, I know, I understand that I'm here to do a job, and I understand that. I don't need no technique, no nothing. I got him. I put in the work in training camp. I understand that the lights, just you know, just lights. It's just people. I done. I do this every day in the gym. When I come in the gym, I come in the gym and I buy. What are you talking about? I don't need no technique. I don't need no technique, dude. I feel like with the Jamel Heron fight, I told every single person that I was going in there to beat him up. What's that? I told him I was going to shine. I told him that if they up the level on me, I'm going to up the level on them. Game ain't never over till it's over. Like, I'm one of them dudes that I don't care what it is. I'm going to try my best in everything that I do. The walk down has begun. And I'm going to give it my all every time. And same thing with this fight. Damn. I am, like, scared of losing, but I will do whatever it takes to win. Like, I'm willing to go to above and beyond just to come out victorious. That's game. That's game. That's the game. That's the game, man. Stevenson's preparation takes into account the unpredictable and dangerous nature of his upcoming opponent. Oscar don't lay down. Like, you could tell he got a don't lay down mentality. A lot of people look at it like uh, he's not confident. But I look at it like I know he's going in there to whoop me. Like he's going to try his hardest and do whatever he can to beat me. And if he can't deal with our hand speed, it's a f***ing rap. At the end of the day, when I go in the ring, I'm going to make sure I give him my all. Right up under them all. I put in the work. I did what I was supposed to do. I don't care how this go. I'm going to make sure that it go my way. Time for the whole world to see. Who I actually am. This is the biggest fight in boxing. So you got two champions putting it all on the line. Belt versus belt. And a lot to lose. He backs up the champion, and it is over. So I feel like it's the best fight in boxing. And I'm going to go in there and I'm going to dominate. Fights don't always come together based on mutual respect. Shakur Stevenson starts mentioning my name. He starts calling me out, telling the whole world that I'm scared of him, telling the whole world that I'm ducking him, posting ducks and everywhere in social media towards me, and just trying to insult me in, in a lot of ways. And that's something that I don't really respect as a as a person. I've always been a positive guy. If I don't have a, a good opinion towards somebody, I just keep my mouth shut. That's not the case for Shakur Stevenson. He speaks what's in his mind, and he tweets what's in his mind, and he posts, and he, and he, and he likes to get it under people's skin. So that's something that I've never been a fan of. Oscar's been coming here for about two and a half years for recovery. It's just enabling him to not only get more out of his training sessions, but he'd be more ready for his next training session. So I think he's gonna be in great shape for his next fight here. I think there's a lot of ego involved. I think there's a lot of arrogance. And, and I think that's all combined. I think it had a lot to do with maybe he's a very young fighter and then maybe he's not mature yet. I think that's the type of fighters that once they hit a wall and they have one loss, they don't never recover from that. I see the benefits, more conditioning, but also it's very relaxing in there. You get my, my own personal time, get to read, get my own thoughts together. I really enjoy it. Get very prepared physically and mentally for those 12 rounds, because it's going to be hell. To be thinking you're the face of boxing right now, you still got to pass through me. So there's no reason to take me lightly. There's no easy fight when you're fighting a guy like me. All right, guys, see you later. All right. Intensity and expectation build to new levels as training for the biggest fight of a career brings not just the need to prepare the body, but the mind as well. They say you win fights in the gym, working hard. That's something I do. I don't worry about what he's going to do. I don't know his game plan. I don't care. What I care is how I work hard in the gym 
and I'm gonna be 100% ready for April 30th. I like banging, I like going in there and giving the fans what they want because I love it. But I can also box if I have to box. And I also can be the smart fighter. And I think that's gonna be the key for this fight. Who's the smartest fighter in there? I believe I'm that type of fighter that can make you seriously question you if you want it or not. Because when you're in that ninth, 10th, 11th round, tired, exhausted, taking shots, you start questioning yourself, do you really want this? You all know Shakur can box, he can move around. But can he really be able to take that shot? Does he have the heart? Does he have the guts? Does he have the hunger that I have? The human body is not meant to be getting hit. Instinct starts kicking in. You might have to quit. You might have to stop the fight. You might have to lose. I think I'm capable of making him quit. Whoever makes the first mistake is gonna pay for it. And I'm up for it. I'm gonna do whatever it takes to win. Motivation inside the ring takes on many forms. For some, it's a chance to prove their worth. While for others, it's a chance for redemption. However, to be named in the pages of boxing history, a fighter must prove himself unconditionally by way of a sport that's both noble and unforgiving. In five years, Shakur Stevenson has accomplished a meteoric rise through sheer will, evasiveness, and technical prowess. Oscar Valdez has seen a professional career dominating his opponents with unimaginable power. Despite their unbeaten records, each fighter has yet to earn their mark in history. On April 30th, in the fight capital of the world, perfection and history will be on the line as two of the division's greatest talents attempt to square the circle and unify a division for the first time in nearly two decades. Don't miss Valdez versus Stevenson, live April 30th on ESPN. <laughs>